Okay, guys, I showed you how to make a carotene trace. That's our standard carotene trace that we do. I'm going to show you one that is a lot more technical. It definitely works a lot better. This is tied on four kilo line all the way through. Sometimes you do hook bronze bream, um, wave garrick, bigger fish. And if it rubs over the rots, over the rocks quite a bit, you tend to lose your fish. I'm going to show you one that is a lot harder, works a lot better. It's a new trace that I've been working with. Mike Dyer showed me the knot. It's called a figure of eight branch knot. And that's about as far as I can go. Obviously our standard Kingfisher saltwater traces, as you've seen for catching quarantine, we do sell. This one's going to be a little bit more technical. Okay, very simple. What we have is 10 kilo maxima, and that's going to be our main part of our trace. Then we're going to have our snooting, which is done with 4.5 kilo, a lot of movement, very soft, very supple, very light. We're using 92247 mustard hooks, and we're using 3 quarter to half ounce pear sinkers. And of course, all that we need is a pair of mustard scissors to cut the nylon. Here we go. Start off with. Let me just move all the stuff off. It's going to make life easier. There we go. Very simple. You give yourself about 35 centimeters of 10 kilo maxima. You tie your first granny knot. You go through once, twice. That's all I've done. A granny knot, and you pull it until it starts to form that figure eight. You see, there we go, started to form the figure eight. I'm not pulling it tight. You then give yourself about 35 centimeters of nylon, and you do the exact same thing. Once, twice. Pull it until it starts forming the figure of eight. There we go. 30 centimeters. Well, we can cut it off or you can just tie on your loop. Depends what you want to do there. There's your figure of eight. Wet it. If you're using a fast attach, it just goes through there. It's quick and easy. Otherwise, you can attach a swivel to it or you can leave it bare and then tie your trace on. Okay. So basically all I've got is two figure of eights tied in a piece of 10 kilo maximum nylon. Simple as that. Okay, I'm going to put that down there. I'm then going to take my maxima 4.5 kilo, 30 centimeters or a little bit longer than 30 centimeters. I'm going to cut my first one. I'm going to cut another one about 30 centimeters long. So I've cut two hook snoots. Basically, both of them 30 centimeters in length. Okay. There we go. Starting at the bottom. You work from, obviously, that's where my swivel is going to be on this side, and my sinker is going to be on this side. Make it easier to explain. Let's just grab a sinker so you guys understand what's going on. Take my sinker. Figure of eight. Pull tight, okay. That's very simple. Cut off the tag here, okay. So that's basically the end part of it. My first knot, which should be about 30 centimeters away, take the 4.5 kilo maxima, and you're going through the first loop. So I'm going through over there. Can you see it? Okay. Then I turn it, grab that tag end, and I go through the second loop of the figure of eight. Okay, so that's it there. All I've done is gone through the two loops. Very simple. Then what I'm going to do is give myself enough uh, line to work with, and I'm going to tie a figure of eight on you. One, two, three times. Take it through the back, pull the tag end of that line, you see it's forming its figure of eight. And I pull it reasonably tight. 
a little bit of lubrication there and push it closer grab the 10 kilo maximum and I start putting pressure on it move that down put pressure once both of them are laying together over there I actually pull both of them tight as I can and there we go so that's the finished knot I'm just going to cut off this little tag in here and what happens is it actually forms a little branch if you can have a look here it actually pushes the actual line away from your main line and this knot if you play with it you will see it is phenomenally strong that knot there is phenomenally strong we just get our measurement right we don't want it to be longer than that so we're just going to give it a little bit of a snip okay so I'm very happy with that I'm now going to go on to the second one and all I'm going to do is just repeat the process here we go there's my nylon again go through the first loop turn it around go through the second one there we go grab it there and then figure of eight one two three times over and through to form my figure of eight yeah, that part of it like that push it as close as I can push that up and then pull both of them as tight as you can there we go simple cut off that tag end just make sure there we go the branch knot is coming out nicely it's away from the main line so basically it's sitting off nicely okay grab our two hooks and we'll just attach our two hooks this hook is very very nice in that it's got two little bobs at the back over there and it's beaked so in other words it curves in it's nice for holding on the bait that you'd use which would be sardine you can use um, pink prawn you can use chocker if you want but definitely for sardine purposes it's most probably the best hook you can use and you cut little cubes and just take the cubes and just stick them on three or four little cubes and you're good to go no need for any cotton And like I said, this is a number eight. I find if you go size nine, sometimes the quarantine tends to swallow it down a little bit deep. And because you want to use it as live bait most of the times, um, it's definitely advisable to go a little bit bigger on the hook. And also, if a blacktail does eat your sardine, you can release him afterwards without killing him, without letting the hook go down its throat. Okay, so let's put those away. This is the finished product. I'm just going to show you guys now. So now what you have is two branches coming off. And you can see how the arms actually stay away from the main line here. And the reason this trace is so good is that this part of it is phenomenally strong. So if you're fishing over rocks all the time and you're pulling this over the rocks, it doesn't fray and you don't lose your sinker too often. This is a lot lighter, so it gives it a lot more movement in the water. And of course, like I said, it actually stays away from the line. Okay. Very simple, very easy to make. I find if you take it and you put it on over a pool noodle, and you can wrap 10 of them nicely into a little piece like this, and you just stack them nicely like that.